gonna crack a rib When I get home I'm gonna bury you In my favorite home Oh my god, I can't get the lighting right So I have to like look at you guys like this Like I'm dream <laughs> Is that weird? Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, welcome back to this YouTube channel. Is this still giving hey, what's up, you guys? Yes, welcome back to, okay. I don't know. Hi. So the reason I was gone for so long was because I literally ran out of storage. Like the last clip that you saw, I filmed that like last year in February. So I've just kind of been stagnant on making videos and stuff though i really really wanted to i just didn't have the storage for it and then recently i saw this like hosier variant on youtube that was making videos of like the iphone 15 and how to make it like look cinematic like a24 realness and then i was like wait i can literally do that with my iphone let me go make videos again and then i forgot that i had a youtube channel so i was like oh I should probably make videos for that again. So here I am, because I want to make videos again. Hi. <laughs> so there's still 300 of you here and you probably forgot that you were subscribed to this channel. So if you forgot and you're seeing this again, please don't leave because it's only about to get crazier if you know what I mean. Like, Although the hosier variant I subscribe to here on YouTube, convinced me that I can make cinematic A24 type YouTube videos. I'm most likely definitely going to edit my videos the same way that I did the last time I was on here because it's just funny and it's chaotic and it's how I learned how to edit in the first place. I think another reason why I didn't make more videos was because I was going through like an identity crisis the last time I was on here and I just didn't want to document my identity crisis online because the internet is scary. Oh my God, if you can hear that, if you can hear that, it's my dog snoring. Anyway, so I figured, so what was I saying? Wait, oh my God. To celebrate my comeback here on YouTube, let's look at my bookshelves again, because like me, not a lot has changed, but there are a few more quirks added onto the lore, if you will. Let's look at my bookshelf. Uh, so on the top of my bookshelf, I just have this, like my uh, beads and stuff and loom bands to make bracelets and stuff. Yes, I still make loom bands. Okay. And then over here, we have my diary of a wimpy kid collection. I used to have all of the books like in order, but I left them back home in the Philippines. So I just have not my favorite books, but I have these. So. Yeah. Over here on the first shelf unit, I have my YA books. I don't think I've really grown out of YA books, but I just kind of don't relate to that school setting anymore. So a lot of these I don't think I'd ever reread anytime soon, but they're just kind of there because they look cute. So yeah. And in this shelf, I just have like books that I would actually read. And I don't know if all of these books were in the last video that I filmed, but I definitely haven't read all of them still. I have new editions like Babel and I think that's it actually. <laughs> Down here I just have like nonfiction books or like biographies, whatever. And then I have a couple of Shakespeare plays here and my favorite book actually, A Thousand One Albums You Must Listen To Before You Die. I feel like it really enhanced my music taste and yeah, I don't know, I just love it. You should buy it. They have like updated versions but yeah. I have more of my existentialist books and my grandfather's poetry and other poetry books. Um, anyway, down here we have books that I haven't read. I, weirdly enough, requested my uncle to buy me all of the Bridgerton books. Uh, some of them are on my other desk. <laughs> Sorry, but Bridgerton is literally this book. Just way better and cuntier and it has a Netflix adaptation so so amazing. This part of my bookshelves are just are just miscellaneous things like I have my makeup here and then I have my two bulletin boards which I didn't go through last time I believe. Um, 
But yeah, so over here I just have like my favorite bands, childhood photos, favorite movies. I have a Gregor Samsa meme up there. And then, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe I'm explaining this on the internet. This is my best friend Charlotte, and one time we were on a Zoom call because this was like lockdown era. <laughs> And she was reaching for her dog or something, and she just looked like the creation of Adam. Creation of Adam? Creation of God? I don't know, that really famous Michelangelo portrait. So I just edited on to her. I just edited on. I, I, so yeah, I just edited it, her onto it and printed it out, and now it's on my wall, so. Sorry, Charlotte if you're watching this. <laughs> and here we just have like, this is a quote from Dead Poets Society, the Ladybird poster, and this is a really, really, really ripped up, beaten, ruined uh, portrait of this one scene in The Princess Diaries. Um, so yeah. This is my girlhood part of my bookshelf. I just have like the Mortal Instruments series on here. I have like the Harry Potter books, but they're back there because JK Rowling. Um, and then I just have like the Twilight books. I have some manga. I have um, some Ransom Riggs books, the Divergent series, and the Scott Westerfeld Uglies series that I never gotten around to reading because it was just way too like, it was way too real for its time. But apparently they're like adapting it into like a Netflix show and it's starring Joey King. I don't really know if I agree with that. I don't really know if it's a good idea to adapt this book or these types of themes into shows because I feel like the point of these books is to have your own imagery of the characters. I think it's kind of dumb that they're doing that, but will I be watching? Probably not, but I will be on Twitter for the reviews. <laughs> I just have like more YA books here and then I have a typewriter here, photo of my granddad, some Maltesers tins, and then this like photo holder that has nothing on it. Um, but yeah, I also have this calligraphy, um, like, painting um, that this dude I met at an event once made, and it's in Baibayan, which is the indigenous uh, writing of the Tagalog language. And this says Manulat, which means writer in Tagalog. So, I love it! If anyone was wondering, I still have the Timothy Chalamet photo. <laughs> Okay, so I just changed into my Kurt Cobain shirt and I just put on a necklace, but I'm gonna do my makeup now while I talk about a prompt that I saved onto my Pinterest board because I love journal prompts, but sometimes I just want to talk about them. I already finished doing my makeup, um, because I forgot to click record. <laughs> Basically, the journal prompt that I saw that I want to talk about with you guys is, um, was there ever a time where you felt like you weren't yourself or you um, kind of had to rely on a different identity? And how did you find your own identity? So I'm 21 now, and I feel like from the age of 17 all the way up to 19, those were the hardest years in terms of like finding who I am and what I want to be in this world and how I want to present myself to others and stuff. Yeah, those were, if you're between the ages of 17 to 19, like, it's a lot. It's not perfect places by Lord. It, it feels like that sometimes. And I know that when I look back into those ages, when I'm a lot, much older, I'm going to be like, wow, what a time to be alive. But also like, it's so scary being 17, 18, and 19. Oh, I'm so glad I'm never gonna be those ages ever again. But I feel like those ages were the most necessary into just entering the stage in which you kind of just have to be mature about things and kind of be real with yourself. But yeah, I struggled a lot with my identity especially when i was like 18 all the way up to 19 and what didn't help was the fact that it was locked down and i was literally concerned for my family's health every single waking moment of my life back then like obviously i'm still very hyper cautious of like when my parents go outside because they are getting old and covid is still a thing covid is still a thing just a little reminder it's still a thing and just being alone during that time in lockdown because i don't have any siblings my best friend during that time was my mom and we binged watch all of gilmore girls actually watching gilmore girls with your mom like it may seem like a oh my god like that's the, like the dream kind of thing me and my mom have always been close but watching gilmore girls like 
that like that I think that changed something get tampered with the bond a little bit and it's not like I'll never see my mom the same but it's just like watching Gilmore Girls being 18 years old and then watching it with your mom who was born in the 60s like also the characters are white people which I cannot relate to my mom also wasn't like Mrs. Kim so it was just like weird to watch with her and we didn't have a lot of disagreements but also just like the vibe of it all it was just I don't know I don't think I'd watch Gilmore Girls with my mom again so wait anyway that was a whole side tangent about my mom girls only talk about their moms anyway oh right finding yourself finding your identity I don't think I've found it it's not like a, mu a missing puzzle piece that you just find on a random sunday morning i had to learn how to be alone to find out who i was and i feel like that's a lot of thing that's a thing that people don't really want to hear because the like you know isolation and solitude is kind of promoted as this thing that's kind of very highly interlinked with melancholy and sadness and depression and dostoevsky white knights <laughs> Damn. Dude, I didn't know they had situationships in St. Petersburg, Russia in the fucking 1800s. Dude, Nastanka. Dude, you're crazy. I think solitude is so important into knowing who you are and what you like about other people, about your boundaries. Um, and like having to look at yourself in the mirror every day and being like, hey, it's, you, it's, it's me and you again. You know what I mean? It took me a while to like look in the mirror and be like I'm not stuck in my body. I'm not stuck in this body. Why am I using the word stuck in this body? Like I'm just in my body. I'm just in my body and um I should learn to appreciate it. I should learn to accept that oh my god, I have a body. That sounds so wrong out of context. I'm alive. I'm breathing. There are millions of cells in my freaking body right now that are doing everything just so I could speak to you right now through the screen. It just, it took me so long to make that click. Sometimes it still doesn't click. Sometimes I look in the mirror, I'm just like, you know, at least I'm not like, ah! Also one thing that didn't help with the whole stuck in the body situation was gender dysphoria, which I'm not gonna get into, but it took me a while to get there. And I didn't have access to resources like talking to a mental health professional. I was just kind of left in the rut. And I feel like solitude is still a thing that I'm learning how to love and appreciate a lot more. And I don't know, I feel like just being alone. Like sometimes I just prefer being alone. Um, you know, it seems very corny and like cheesy and everyone always says this, but like genuinely, like how are you supposed to be around other people that you love if you cannot stand the thought of being by yourself? with the media that I consume. No one really talks about how isolation um, helps a lot, actually. Because I feel like people nowadays are very dependent on another person, whether it be a romantic interest, whether it be a friend um, that you trauma dump to every now and then. And I still find myself doing that sometimes. Like people will always say questions like, oh, if you were in a room with like this people, like, who would you look for, blah, blah, blah. And no one really ever says like, no, I just like, be by myself. I think being by myself is cool. It's fine. And it's not like, oh, I'm by myself. I don't need anyone else. It's just like, okay, if I'm by myself, then that's fine. You know what I mean? Um, so yeah. Uh, I'm this video and I realized that I never really came to a conclusion, but I hope what I said makes sense. I was mostly just like yapping um, about how I felt and how far I've come. I look like L from Death Note. Oh, this is not looking good. Never mind.